What better way to end the year than with some awesome Empire vs. Grand Cathay human faction action, this replay from Umaze. And what a year it's been. I can't believe 2023 is already drawing to a close. 2024 is nearly upon us. By the time some of you guys are seeing this, it might have already come upon you. But uh, it's definitely been a year, I'll tell you what. One of the most challenging years by far um, for myself on the channel. I've definitely considered quitting more this year than in any years past because of challenges with Total War themselves, with Creative Assembly, uh, you know, views on the channel not being perhaps what they were in years past because of the situation with Total War and kind of general malaise over DLCs not being up to standard of what we would want and lots of other issues, but nonetheless persevered and it's been a lot of fun despite everything. I've very much enjoyed my time with you all and I've been able to cast so many amazing games and engage with the community in very meaningful ways. And honestly, you guys are largely the reason why I'm still doing this. I mean, um, yeah, just being able to show off the awesome replays. Like, I remember the feeling I used to get when I would submit my replays to somebody like Air Carthage or Turin and have my replay featured on their channel. It's such an awesome feeling. And to be able to give that to other people has been incredible. Um, to just be able to give something people something entertaining to watch also um, all the kind words that I've gotten from people over this year definitely encouraged me and helped me soldier on and will continue to uh, soldier on as long as I continue to get enjoyment out of it and you know fulfillment and everything uh, the money is okay it's not great it's certainly nice to have you know a couple hundred extra bucks from a little side hustle uh, which thankfully this is not my main job so I don't have to stress too much over producing the exact type of content that's going to generate the most views. Instead, I can create the type of content that I want to create, which has largely been and will continue to be land battles for Total War Warhammer. I've experimented a little bit. Unfortunately, Realms of Ruin kind of flopped on release. The game showed a lot of promise, but ultimately there were some serious issues that weren't really overcome, especially by marketing. The game in particular, in my opinion, was marketed very poorly, so it's unfortunate. I had high hopes for it that it was going to be kind of another game I could mix in on the channel, but for the time being, we'll stick with Total War Warhammer. Uh, only, maybe I'll start to mix in some, you know, Age of Empires or some other RTS games in the future, but we'll see. It kind of just depends on reception and how things go with Total War itself. Uh, there's a lot of promise with the year upcoming, but anyway, I've ranted on long enough about myself. Let's take a look at the builds here from Umaze. The Temple of Luminarch's already got a couple of effective shots here, blasting out that uh, Jet Lion. As for the rest of the build, we've got some great swords, Great against Grand Cathay, some Spearmen, of course, uh, plenty of Empire Knights as well, for Cavalry support. I say plenty, it looks like three Empire Knights. And then some Pistoliers as well, love me some Pistoliers. Uh, great to have some Skirmish Cavalry against Cathay in general. Cathay side, Jade Lancers uh, over here, Peasant Horsemen being harassed by the Empire Captain is just great as well. More Peasant Horsemen over here, Zhao leading the way. And we've got some more Jade Lancers, some Shotguns, Iron Hail Gunners, Peasant Archers, a Peasant Long Spears up front with an Astromancer on the legendary Mount of Mounts. The, uh, I honestly don't even, Compass, that's what it is. Hujing War Compass also gives him a couple of AoE damage abilities and also gives Mastery of the Elemental Winds, which will increase the uh, effectiveness of Zhao's spells slightly. So let's get things rolling as uh, there's, again, already been some effective shooting from the Temple Hoff. Going to take another shot. Ooh, unfortunately, friendly fires from those Empire Knights rather than actually contacting Zhao Ming. But, uh, ooh, another Alchemist in the back, so not quite maxing Mastery of the Elemental Winds, but getting a decent amount extra so that when Zhao casts his spells, which it looks like he does have Dragon's Breath, I'm not sure about Final Transmutation as he's in Dragon Mode currently, but... Let's see. Looks like the melee engagement going to be getting underway. Empire General on Pegasus is the leader here, and a great wizard. Allows you maze to distribute a lot of value out into units in his army. Net here, plus Templehof Blast on Zhao. Going to be able to do a lot of damage to him. I mean, he has enough HP that he's not going to get, like, destroyed completely by this, but certainly will be effective in uh, dealing with him. Yeah, they didn't bring a lot of armored infantry for the great swords to fight, but they'll have no problem carving through these peasant long spears and engage in the front line there. Zhao, though, is going to need to be screened by these Empire Knights in the back line, so one 
um, unit stays back to do so, the other units are going to come forward to try and help in this frontline engagement. A Jade Lancer is also pushing back, looking to smash these great swords. AoE damage also being deployed as well. The compass um, does get some decent contact, does some friendly fire on the Peasant Long Spears, but that was probably worth it overall. My is attempting to dodge, doesn't quite get it all the way, but uh, Zhao Ming with his Van Braces has some potential for some self healing here. Templehof, though, is uh, continuously getting pressured, and the Empire Knights are having a hard time actually stopping him and preventing him from moving too much. Uh, Pistolier's also used up a lot of their ammunition already. Let's see, have they proven to pay for themselves yet? Yep, pretty much just exactly right now on that next volley. Well, maybe. They pretty much paid for themselves. Also pulling those Jay Lancers away from the frontline engagement. Great Swords again fighting. We're going to see another bombardment this time just the uh lightning does get a decent chunk out of those great swords so, so far the astromancer won the schmoozing compass it's doing okay well fire breath there slightly misplaced meant to go over the spearmen but mistargeted slightly so it doesn't actually hit them but Zhao just staying on that temple hoff as much as possible it's definitely a good call but that does leave his own army a little bit out to dry as the empire is able to just prevail in melee in many respects, you know, the uh, great swords, no problem cutting out those peasant long spears. State troops getting in the back line into these peasant archers. Got they just having a hard time getting their skirmish units away and firing consistently. They're kind of overinvested, I think, a little bit here, especially like the archers. But uh, yeah, the iron hails with up close DPS should be able to push back some of these units. We'll see. Certainly, Zhao is a force to be reckoned with, and in the back line. Starting to support his uh, cavalry properly to just beat the Empire Knights, which is what he probably should have been doing anyway. I mean, the Templehof Luminarch is going to have a tough time getting consistent contact on him while he's mixed in this big blob. And it's taken enough damage now. That the leadership's not looking great. If the Jade Lancers could have get out in space and chase it away. I mean, that would pretty much do the trick. Um, Zhao would be largely safe at that point. So there's not a lot on the v Empire's roster that can deal with him directly. The uh, <laughs> General of the Empire is struggling to even kill Iron Hills here. Looks like we're going to get another bombardment, and Yumais doesn't quite dodge this one in time. That's going to be a really nice contact on that. To lightning there. Uh, what is it? Not Chain Lightning. Celestial Lightning, I guess, technically. Okay. <laughs> Your end's Thunderbolt's the actual spell. But uh, yeah, Templehof does eventually get caught up in the cavalry. Jao's able to terrify it away, and I think it's pretty much done for at this point. That said, let's see a Melkos mystifying Miasma is going to be damaging these Jay Lancers over time. Haven't really been noticing that get spammed too much. Grey Wizard has some value, not a crazy amount, so hasn't been putting it out too much, I don't think. But uh, definitely over the course of this next phase can help equalize this cavalry situation a little bit and deal with some of these Jade Lancers. Uh, great swords are still quite healthy, cutting up these infantry units, no problem. And Cathay's skirmish phase has been completely shut down. So that does mean that Harmony is going to be mostly absent from this build, which, I mean, it largely has been due to the destruction of the Jet Lion, the hands of the Temple Hoff, and, uh, you know, also the ranged units kind of getting separated from a lot of their melee components here. Cathay facing some serious leadership issues as a lot of their units are routed away here. But uh, Zhao's still got a nice pocket forming here where he's able to terrify away some of these uh, Empire Knights, get these Pistoliers out of here. And let's see what happens. A lot of routing Cathayans to be chased. And if the Empire gets a little bit too spread out here, they could potentially be counterattacked effectively. Yeah, nice move to block with those Jade Lancers there. Block those Pistoliers, although they swiftly turn. Gonna use up the last of their volleys there. General of the Empire now chasing. Yep, here comes some Empire Knights. We're gonna see a little bit of uh, withering, actually, to reduce their armor. Interesting, and leadership. The reduction of armor in particular is quite significant as they face off against the Empire Knights, since they will uh, take a lot more damage from the charge, take more damage from the pistol shots of the Pistoliers as well. Looks like they're trying to use up the last of their ammunition on Zhao as the brave general of the Empire moves into combat against him. Yeah, this is uh, quite a bold move indeed. Okay, hopefully OBS is doing okay. I think it might have had just a little bit of an issue there. But uh, anyway. 
Yeah, let's see here. General of the Empire actually going to get swiftly terrified away, although this battlefield situation for Cathay is looking pretty grim. The balance power is fairly heavily against them, but uh, did Zhao actually bring the Van Braces? Surely. Uh, interesting. Did he not bring his healing thing? Oh, no, here we go. Burning Van Braces. Okay, so he does have it. Um, and it has not gone off yet, so... He still has that massive potential self-healing still in the bank, which could prove to be pretty problematic for um, the Empire into this late game here, especially if the General of the Empire gets routed. I mean, I guess there's technically still Captain here to try and fight Zhao, but that's a pretty hopeless single-entity fight. Maybe not completely hopeless, but uh, it's going to be grim. Oh, but here goes Captain. Oh, full send. I love it. Rear charge while he has support on the ground. Try and catch Zhao on the ground. Uh, you know, get these spears in support. Maybe even charge in the pistoliers. He can get army losses before Zhao gets the van braces. Oh, no, but there's the heal. And look at the effect on the balance of power as it shifts back significantly towards Cathay. So let's see. The brave captain and his state troops. I mean, that's pretty much it. The Grey Wizard probably should come help as well. He's another single entity that can... You know, go 2v1 in this fight, potentially help defeat Zhao. I don't think he has. I mean, the Withering would definitely help here if he has Winds of Magic left to be able to cast it. Um, again, lowering armor on Zhao is at 100, down to 70. Definitely helps these units get better damage on him. Let's see. We'll fast forward a little bit through this pursuit phase as uh, Zhao chases the captain. The captain's going to try and get back towards the Shadow Wizard and other supporting units, or just chase routing units off. I'm not really sure. Yep, looks like he's able to shatter those spears pretty easily. So the biggest thing is the captain and uh, the Grey Wizard need to fight again together and on the ground with support if possible. Let's see here. Zhao's going to terrify away some poor state troopers in the woods there. Try and get his one healthy Peasant Long Spear to be a support unit, but they are... Not feeling it, necessarily. And it looks like... Yeah, looking... Looking all right. Ooh. Empire. Trying to, perhaps, bait Zhao out away from his support units, but really, again, should try and get as much of their own units together as possible. They, you use the Withering there, it looks like, on the Peasant Long Spearmen to actually route their leadership. Interesting choice. Here we go, 2v1 versus Zhao, Captain, and Gandalf. Uh, they're actually just going to immediately pull away there. Quick cycle charge, take some damage, and again, they want to try and fight with their ground support units as much as possible, so let those great swords move in temporarily and engage. Let's see here. Zhao going to be forced to attack something. Just going straight after the Great Swords, to be honest, which is an interesting choice. I guess there's no more Winds of Magic from the Grey Wizard. Again, he should be around to try and help. Uh, they don't need to chase these routing Peasant Longspears. They're already shattered anyway. But 2v1, don't think it's going to end up mattering. We'll see. It's all dependent on Captain's RNG here. And whether he's able to cycle charge effectively. Looks like Yumaze is going to be able to pull out there. Great swords. with are a little bit of armor piercing. I say a little bit of armor piercing. It's pretty decent armor piercing. They don't have the best attack, though. Not going to be getting great contact on him. But when they do, they'll do 25 armor piercing damage. Spears also. with their anti-large bonus, obviously. Although they're going to get terrified away very quickly. So, again, we'll fast forward. Wait for these two single entities to come engage. Captain and Gandalf once again. Teaming up like the best of buds, although Captain is having the landing bug, which was supposedly fixed, but really is probably never going to be fixed in Warhammer 3, let's be honest. It is most unfortunate, as it doesn't really count him in this fight. Four single entities finally is able to land there, start to get some hits on Zhao, but uh, during the time it took for him to bug out, the Grey Wizard was actually defeated and routed, so that's an unfortunate situation for the Empire, definitely. Let's see, Captain's also critical for holding leadership together here at this point, so really don't want to lose him, if at all possible. But let's keep fast-forwarding. This end phase to try and take out Zhao is going to take quite some time. He is an absolute powerhouse of character, and uh, might even be able to tank out the rest of this Empire build, if we're being completely honest here. Let's see. Let's see here. 
great swords with their little bit of armor piercing. Again, Captain's just like trying to avoid Zhao at this point. But, uh. Yeah, notice how Yumaiz is not like over blobbing his units in either. Well, he can keep these guys relatively fresh. Like, they're getting now up to tired, which will definitely help them in this endgame fight. We'll see. Their leadership is already struggling. These spearmen don't. Yeah, don't have the best leadership. They're liable to rout potentially here just due to terror. But Yumai is kind of feeding his units one by one rather than trying to go all in uh, again in one big blob. A lot of that is going to be effective. We'll see here. I mean, certainly the extra vigor seems to be helping these spearmen significantly as they're able to do some serious damage to Zhao. And will it be actually the lowly state troop spearmen? Indeed it is. They managed to rout the mighty Zhao himself. Yeah, that really critical there to rest those spearmen to give them the extra vigor to actually win out that fight. Because if they're exhausted from running around in circles the whole time, they probably just straight up lose and get terror routed there. So that was actually very important to rest those units in that end game. Something we don't often see, but very good from you mains. Love that for our year end. Nice empire victory over Grand Cafe. Couldn't have asked for a better replay myself. Also get to see some cost-effective pistoliers, which I don't see as often as I used to, but certainly a matchup where they can shine. Both of them paying for themselves. Empire Knights also. One of them pays for themselves. The other two are very valiant blocking detachments. The Templehof Luminarch also manages to pay for itself. Pretty good value on the Grey Wizard as well from casting those mail costs and supporting with the Witherings. Uh, the M General of the Empire is super cheap, so you don't really look for a lot from him, but he was able to do some. The captain's definitely the true uh, hero of the Empire, just for holding things together there at the end. Zhao, of course, 4,000 damage value. Insanely strong character. Arguably should be banned. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. But uh, anyway, the Astromancer also managed to get some pretty good value. I still don't know if it's fully worth it to bring him. I mean, the, the, the damage value that he got out wasn't quite enough to pay for himself, and so then you're relying on the extra Master of the Elemental Winds to make up for the rest of his value. I'm not sure, it's hard to say. Zhao definitely did a lot of damage, so um, can't say for certain, but taking out the Jet Lion before it was even able to engage definitely set Cafe back a little bit here and didn't allow them to get as much harmony, which ended up being pretty important. Jade Lancer's 1,000 damage value, though, very cost-effective. The Infantry side uh largely they get rolled by the empire infantry but are still able to trade okay in very specific instances definitely a fun one though hopefully you guys enjoyed that if you do like the sort of content be sure to like subscribe hit that bell notification every time i upload a new video you'll be notified thanks again we'll see you next time